What's good, everybody? Welcome to another SFL Breakdown, SFL US edition, of course, with myself, Ruinja, my boy, Lazarus. Took a couple of weeks break. There's been holidays and all that, but now SFL is starting again. Week 10 is about to pop off, so we wanted to get the Week 9 Breakdown out there. And of course, yeah, I had a great holidays. We talked a little bit about it before we started recording here, but definitely a good holidays, a good New Year's. How about yourself? I'll let the people know just briefly how it was. Yeah, no, it was good. Got to see family, as, uh, as most people do, I assume. Um, and it was good, good, nice break away from like fighting games for a bit, you know. I had like about a week off for work as well. So time to recollect myself and, uh, you know, I can't wait to be back in fighting games, especially with Street Fighter Six. Yeah, recharging. That's always like so important, exactly. you know, in life. Like we got to find moments to recharge. That's essential as human beings, I feel like. And of course, these guys at SFL, like they were just thrust into a situation, right, where they're playing over 10 weeks of games in a minimal amount of time. Like they got no breaks they were just out here grinded but you can always see the level up of all the players coming out of it so it's like a boot camp in that way right and let's get to this week's edition of the boot camp we got bandits versus endemic to start it off we started off with chris t versus samurai of course classic west coast battle classic shoto battle norcal versus socal these two have faced each other like countless times over uh, street fighter 4 street fighter 5 and now street fighter 6 Definitely the battle of what top two versus uh top top seven now is it? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I literally I literally just watched the clip of like uh, Big Bird, you know, talking like getting a whiff punish from Marissa and Phenom's just in the background. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> playing Lu uh, Ken even. Oh, it's so good. Oh, uh, could you show me a stream, by the way? Oh, realized. my goodness. I did forget about that. So, yeah. And like it was funny because before, you know, we started doing this, I was talking to the stream a little bit about like my top five and i was like there's about eight or nine characters in my top five so like you know it, it just feels like it's one of those yeah, yeah ken's up there it's like it just feels like the discourse is going to constantly shift to one character or another depending on a clip that goes viral or a result that happens whatever it may be but like there's like it's seriously eight to nine characters in this game that can win a tournament at any given moment like convincingly yeah. you know there might be even more than that yeah, I think that's just a testament to the balance of the game, honestly. I mean, that's one of the nicer things about having like a smaller roster in some in some regards is that you do the power levels are generally a lot closer as well. You know, you don't have many outliers uh, from the top end of the scale and, you know, the lower end as well. Um, so, yeah, it's good to see. Obviously, you're saying these, these two players play each other a lot. Uh, and again, at this point in the in the season, I think every team's already played once at least, right? So this is kind of getting the reruns and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this was a pretty surprising game, not going to lie for me. I mean, I think okay. Samurai played incredibly well uh, with his Christie. Um, yeah. And honestly had some moments that I just, they just put a smile on my face. Oh, I'm yeah. sure you can imagine which one. Oh, I, yeah. mean, I got the it, first time stamp line though. Tough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been like a couple of weeks now. And so when I watched it, this was a couple of weeks ago. So some of my notes, I need to make better notes. It's my own fault, really. <laughs> I'm like, what was I talking about here? <laughs> you don't take so future we'll Lazarus into consideration when you write your notes. Yeah, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll watch it like obviously on the day of because like that's the only chance I get. Um, and then I'm like, oh, nice. And I come back to it. I'm like, what did I mean by yat? Like, what? <laughs> Oh, I'm just writing Gen Z slang as my notes. That's not good. Literally. I don't know what it means. Um, oh. uh, but like, uh, yeah, Samurai, there was a, a couple of moments in this match, too, where he gets hit mm. by pokes or blocks pokes, and then he jumps and commits to Chris throwing a fireball or like a stand heavy kick. I feel like that's a, a hallmark of Samurai's play. Like, he's really good at like getting hit by something or blocking and then jumping and hitting the person's next commitment. But uh, if we want to get to the, the first time stamp, this, this is definitely the first thing that put a smile on my face. And I was like, oh, yeah, this <laughs> guy, know. Samurai, he's back. <laughs> like, this is the, the pressure, the nerves of SFL. It has melted away in this moment right here, for sure. Yeah, I mean, this is something you just you just don't <laughs> see this anymore, man. You just don't see that anymore. Like, it was like a maybe it was very fairly common in Street Fighter 5, maybe just because I watched, uh, you know, Ending Walker a lot. He just did that all over true, the, true, like, true. All the time. True, true, true. But that was the dash up delay ODDP. That that's crazy. Like, <laughs> I mean, if, if if that's blocked, you're like dead sometimes. That's yeah. why you don't go for it anymore. You know, in Street Fighter Five, yeah, you take a bit of damage, but you know, not too much. But now, if you if that's blocked, you're cooked. You're in the corner versus Ken. You're in burnout. It's terrible. But nope, he doesn't care. He does not care. He doesn't, bro. <laughs> I love the little the little shimmy he does after the dash too. Like, oh, <laughs> he just says little Ugh, shoulder Yeah, exactly. Shake. It's the delay. Yeah. Like, I, I, I tacked. I pressed. Like, oh, I don't yeah. care who you are. Yes, everyone got hit there. Everyone got hit there. <laughs> that, that was uh, so good, man. Oh. And uh, Samurai, another note I have down was Samurai. It felt like he was betting on Christy throwing a lot because there was a lot of wake-up backdashes I felt like in this set, for sure. But Samurai overall played super clean. I have another note here down 
about 4255. I have it clean with punish from Chris T. I don't even remember what this is because, like you, I, uh, I watched it a little bit ago. <laughs> but uh, there's uh, some highlights for this shirt that I, that I really like yeah, seeing. I, I do have some notes still. I like, got some timestamps oh, yeah, we can jump cool. to. It. Oh, damn, that's clean. Yeah, and this is like a, a signature Chris T style of gameplay, too. Like, he'll get you in the corner, he'll do his little light string pressure to see if you get hit, and he'll try to confirm it from there. But if he has you low and he's got a big life lead, he's not trying to stay close and constantly put you in strike throw he's backing up and he's just waiting he's like i'll get into fireball range or i'll wait for you to jump or something like that right in this case he just keeps backing up lets samurai whiffs and then takes the whiff punish for the round super clean um to be fair my first timestamp was a bit further back it okay was, yeah, uh, yeah give it to me where it starts so if you jumped like 36 35 there was a moment where i was like hmm like immediately since like i watched all kevin start to do it i've started to think about it a lot in my games and everything like that but like here like he get he blocks his low forward right there obviously he, take, he gives up his turn after he's jabbed because you know it is minus uh but he doesn't do anything right he just kind of takes it and that was a moment where i was like oh imagine if you drive reversal there like imagine how good a position you're in i mean you're close to burnout but it's technically you're still your turn right so oh, yeah. you know like here you, you drive by Slim back in the corner it's your mm -hmm. turn he has to kind of guess he's just waiting three bars as well and then funnily enough i think samurai's had the same idea because he jumped to 38 25. in the exact same situation he, he looked for it this, this time mm, and okay. something that comes up i've been seeing more and more often which is really cool to see just like kind of the evolution of offense again just kind of gives up his turn on that minus frames boom yeah. immediately gets his turn back you know obviously that way that time he has way more drive gauge to work with so that's probably why he didn't do it the first time yeah um but it's just something i like to note that i started to see more players do absolutely i can't remember if it was because i've been taking notes for fav cup as well i can't remember oh, if yeah. it was this or fav cup but i saw something similar right i, th I think it was fav cup because i think it was moke and like he had his opponent in the corner and they ended up getting a pressure string and he just immediately drive reversal right and it was because he had enough meter to where he wasn't going to burn himself out right he was like all right i can do this not be burnt out i get a huge drive rush for pressure after that Definitely, it feels like that's why Samurai did it here rather than the previous one as well, right? Just that drive gauge management that hey, we already knew it was going to be important when the game launched, but it's just yep. become so, so much more important than I think we even imagined initially. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the only other note I had was like 3740, uh, a little bit back again. But uh, obviously, we think of uh, Sandblaster as a really strong projectile. But there are some situations where I think it kind of sucks. Like, it's, it's kind of this one, right? He's got so much health. You're not really going to chip yeah. him down low enough. And normally, having a normal fireball here, you can, like, well, fireball, then do the low forward. Yes. Whereas, like, here, you can't do that. Like, if you had your fireball before, behind that, the level one can't hit. But because Sandblast is so fast, like, you just don't have that option. And that is kind of one of the one of the very few downfalls of Luke. It's like, yeah, in burnout, he can't completely abuse you as easily. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. It's like you're chipping away at him a little bit, but obviously you want to start a full offensive sequence where you get yeah. close and you start getting them into a strike throw. And yeah, his fireball's not good for that straight up. It's definitely a, a weakness of the character. But uh, yeah, overall, like you said, I just thought Samurai played so much more like himself this game, like the yes. dash of DPs. There was a couple of moments of the signature. I'm not going to move at all in the neutral yep. from Samurai where he <laughs> was just completely still. And I was just like, all right, this is the Samurai I've been waiting for. I don't know if it was the nerves melting away. I don't know if he was just taking a little while to get really comfortable with the game and high level competition or what. But this is what I hope to see going forward from Samurai 100%. Yeah, it's nice to see, obviously. I mean, it took nine weeks to get here, right? But, I mean, it's understandable. There's a lot of pressure in this, in this environment. Um, and, yes, finally showing up and, you know, being Chris T, definitely no slouch. Um, and, yeah, like I said, really impressed. Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff right there. And, of course, the money button in there. I got I got the money <laughs> button on the soundboard, but you can't hear it, so I'm not nice. going to do it. But, you know what I'm saying? So it's okay. Um, but, yeah, that was the to kick off the Bandits versus Endemic set where you said, like, Samurai played super clean. Taking down Chris T, that's a, a big dub for the squad for sure. When we have Shao Hai versus Reynolds next as well. And let me see. My, my first timestamp, I believe. See how far into it. Yeah, it's pretty pretty short into the match. Just, again, I, I like that off of Reynolds' initial perfect parry that we see here. He just ends up uh, attacking the drive gauge. It's about this is where the timestamp begins. So he does the perfect parry, oh, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. He does the stand heavy punch into the the drive impact and like look at this like chow hai had three bars of drive meter going into this right and then stand fierce drive impact puts him at barely over one 
and I feel like even though it doesn't burn him out, it completely handicaps him for the rest of the round. Now he's just like not able to freely, like if he just gets up and tries to drive rush, he's barely gonna have any meter. And uh, what's something that's really great about JP is that he can keep kind of chipping away at your drive meter, even from a distance, right? So like he doesn't get burnt down for a while in this round, but he's always low. Like it's pretty interesting to see. Like completely different than the JP as well, because your options if you're Xiao Hai are so limited. Yeah. There's only so much you can do, because you know if you drive rush, you're in burnout. And if you're in burnout, you're going to lose. So, well, unless you find the hit like right there. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, it, it, you need he to still had to put himself and, yeah. in burnout to do that, right? So, like, yes. look, he got he got hit to just above one bar at 88 seconds, right? He was at one bar of drive meter until he burned himself out at like 67. Like, that's so much control of the round, so much time to control just from that initial punish counter off the perfect parry being a drive impact punish shows the importance of going after drive gauge yeah like i said that entire round was basically dictated immediately just because of like one decision you made uh which is you know kind of it's kind of nice because like, again at this level it's kind of hard to you know force a mistake from your opponent especially at the, oh. you know someone like xiao hai yeah okay. um so Ooh. being I, able I, to just punish I, them for one thing is pretty huge yeah absolutely and, and this is what i meant i mean it wasn't in burnout already it was this right where he was kind of avoiding uh, being see. on the ground to get his yes. drive meter chip to be in burnout and it kind of forced him into jump and then Renault gets this gigantic anti-air that's so good for jp <laughs> yeah i mean that is one nice thing though if you do guess right and you threw those projectiles like i, I think uh at a point where even uh, if he jumped to like 49 10 I think there's a really sick dragon lash over the top of one of the, of, over the top of the projectile, which is uh, kind of like one of the weaknesses of it. Of it, obviously, it's pretty low recovery, but in terms of like the hitbox, it can be a bit hit or miss. Um, unless you yeah, do some right funky there. stuff like that yeah. right over the top, and it's like oof. But then if you jump to like <laughs> later on, we'll see it, and it definitely has a hitbox that's way bigger than you'd ever imagine. So it, it is kind of weird. It's like sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. it, it's very strange the, the way the way Ghost works for sure. Yeah, um, exactly. And uh, speaking of goals, I, I do think that Reynolds Star is utilizing them a little bit more effectively. Like he catches on to a lot of Shao Hai's yeah. fireball timings. Like here, right? This is another timestamp I have where he just blows up fireball with OD goes. He sees it. He just like boom, completely stuffs. There, there was a lot of uh, good timings from Reynolds when it came to OD goes. Yeah, I think it's kind of important to note as well this kind of matchup because we do see again later with Angry Bird and DCQ, mm -hmm. and you can see the differences how Reynolds plays it and how. Like Angry Bird's kind of doing a similar style, but the way that Rainer would played it would have probably worked against Angry Bird, but these accused didn't, uh, which we'll get to when we get there. Indeed, and there was a, another little timestamp that I had here at fifty-one thirteen. If we just hop a little bit forward, where Reynold uh, seemingly to me he uses the the Nemo tech, where it's like you notice somebody is parrying, so during the recovery of it, you just di them, like right here, right. So I, I literally had that there as well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so this to me was definitely Reynold recognizing the moment he sees the parry. And of course, for those that may not still know that once you parry, all you can do during the recovery of parry, like when the blue goes away is block. If you try anything else during that recovery, you're going to get punished countered because like the person's going to do something and whatever you do doesn't actually come out. You're just in a punish counter state. So all you can do is block. So at high level, when people are just blocking, when they're near the corner, you could do that. Something Nemo explained in a YouTube video months and months ago now. So that was a really sick to see Reynolds kind of utilize that and get a huge hit off of it. That is sick, I'm not going to lie. Like, again, people, we know how strong parry is. We know how strong it's being abused and stuff like that. Especially, uh, you know, when you got that perfect parry timing down, it's, it's really obnoxious to deal with. So being able to, like, punish it in unique ways like that is, is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, no one's going to stand there and hold parry. Like, no one's doing that. Like, yeah. once they see the parry swift, they, they have to let go. They're going to walk up and throw them. Or they're going to keep losing drive gauge. So it's just, yeah, super smart. And this right here, like, I, I, I saw this, and I wondered if, like, this was pure, like, reaction or catching on to fireball timings or if Reynolds was just gonna go for di but he waited till he was over one bar of drive gauge yeah. to do it right like he okay. literally just does it right after he gets the bar <laughs> so i'm like did he wait to not burn himself out with the drive impact and it just worked out with this timing either way i mean six stuff uh, uh, to me wait, wait, what happened you cut you cut off totally after sure. you said to me oh um, I said to me, it looked like he kind of is trying to push him into the corner, so it's mm, close enough to yeah. get the stun if he if he does block it. 
Uh, but yeah, honestly, it could be either. I mean, that's another great option. Obviously, if you're walking at someone, they want to do something to interrupt you. So there's a good chance they're going to do a fireball or press a button. So, well, DI is going to blow up both of them if you're in burnout. So Precisely. Yeah, I really like that from Reddit. There was like so many things that like kind of led itself to doing DI and he recognized all those in the moment. And yeah, Shao Hai was just a little late, wasn't expecting it. And then this time, of course, we have a rental or a, yeah, yeah, he just wasn't expecting it. he ended up throwing the fireball. And then we have a Shao Hai switching to jury. And uh, yeah. to me, this was a lot of him trying to force the issue with drive rush yeah. and Reynolds just being ready for all the drive rushes. Like we immediately see a check here. I even have to look up the timestamp for it. It just came. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Definitely. I think uh, jury's fallen out a lot of people's favor just because like she just is so reliant on drive rush. And when people have gotten good and they just check it, like, I mean, it's hard to play. And you know what? I mean, he has some of the best buttons to check it with. So I, I just don't feel this matchup is going to be that great for jury in general. Yeah, it really doesn't feel like it a lot of time. And then uh, I get why. Sometimes you just need something else, right? You, like you're playing Luke or whatever, uh, and it's just not working out. You just need something to like refresh yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got to give yourself a chance to look at the game from a different perspective, right? Like you see your time on this character may open your eyes up to something uh, yeah. on your original character. There's a lot of things that can kind of flip that switch when it comes to playing fighting games that people are looking for. Um, but like the last timestamp I had was pretty much the Ender. And I just said that Reno needs to uh, go point at Banana Can and send him a, a fruit basket <laughs> for Same. the way he ended this game. The driver, the point blank drive rush OD oh. command grab. Like, come on, son. Yeah. I just, I just put JP players copy in the goat for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all they're doing. I mean, we see it way more. Like, I swear I saw all the JP players start to do it now. I'm like, God damn it. Um, and then... Uh, teach them bad things. It, dude, it is. like I was like, y'all, you are bad influence, <laughs> Banana Ken. Like, yeah, all of these literally. JP players now. Everybody uh, was like, what's the point of command grab? Now everybody's yeah. like, yeah, what is the point of command grab? I want you to think that way. <laughs> I think uh, I only had, like, one other timestamp for this thing. And it was a bit back. So if you jump, like, okay. 50, 35. It's more just, like... It's less of a moment, more just paying attention to your opponent because you kind of see what they want if you look, watch the buffer, right? Uh, so it definitely helps you be able to react to like certain things. Um, I'm trying to think of the particular moment. Oh, but, yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. He's yeah, like, yeah. he's buffering down, right? So he's looking for the amnesia mm -hmm. on your drive rush. That's all he's doing. And then boom, he sees it, instantly reacts. Whereas if you're like, if you, after the first time, if you know that, then you could have recognized it immediately. Yes. Did nothing as you drive rush because you know they're looking for it and then blown them up. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things. It's like a very subtle thing. Obviously, they could be faking you out or whatever, but that's like, that's high level, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, if they're faking you out by doing fake buffers, then, then like, well they, played. yeah, exactly. They deserve <laughs> to, to win the interaction. You know what I mean? Definitely. I like I like you picking up on that though. That was uh, definitely a huge point to make. Like, really, if that's something that you could Pay recognize in the basically. moment, that's yeah. like such a big win. I mean, you see it all the time, right? When someone yeah. is, when they're in burnout, you see them buffering all the time. So you see the opponent, like, not overcommit. Um, <laughs> I'm just but... laughing because I was watching Big Bird and Daigo last night, and this dude, Daigo, oh, bro. Yeah, yeah. Every time he was burnt out, <laughs> this Ken, he was going back and down, back and down. Like, he was just buffering the level one. Buffering. It was so funny. I mean, yeah, again, if you know what they're looking for, that like, you just don't give it to them, right? Yeah. I mean, that's like... Uh... One of the simplest things and that was just another case of that but it's a little bit more subtle because it's like a obviously not in burnout it's again something not obvious immediately yeah um and then the next match was men rd versus chris cch mm -hmm. i actually don't have many specific timestamps with this Dang, one do i yeah because it, it was just like men is like i'm really good at street fighter <laughs> like that's uh, what yep you know <laughs> that's what this game looked like to me like he was just a wall in the neutral and then when he got offense he just seemed to know what chris was gonna do and just exploited him like it was just one of the most dominating sets we've seen in sfl i think yeah it was kind of like i felt like it was men rd had some sort of challenge to like check drive rush with every button in the game like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i think luke's pretty privileged in that in that a lot of his buttons are great drive rush checks you know something like a stand jab is something unassuming like in neutral otherwise but you know, it moves it forward and it's fast enough that it can check drive rush and you're not you're not gonna whiff or get whiff punish like like a lot of other jabs and things like that. And he was just using every button in the book, you know, stand medium punch, crouch medium punch, of course, stand heavy punch even sometimes. Like it just he was so ready for like absolutely everything Chris wanted to do. Yeah, and then like Meta is so good at playing on Luke with a lead, right? I think Luke as a character is super good at playing with a lead. 
And yeah, when he's just uh, having so many right gambits at the start of the game, then it just feels like it's almost impossible to kind of walk in on him and get those big hits that you need going. So because of that, you know, it was just rough. I can't remember if Chris actually wins this round. I see that he's on a pixel. Okay, he does. But I feel like that's the only round he ends up winning because I remember this being yeah. very convincing <laughs> for Meta. Yeah, it didn't, like I said, there's nothing really flashy going on. No, it just wasn't. doing all the right Street Fighter stuff, you know. Like, that's what Mena likes to do, I think. Versus some players, he just chills out, right? He just kind of dominates you in every aspect of the game. Doesn't feel the need to, like, over-pressure or over-commit. He'll just, if he gets the offense going, he's more than likely going to guess better, you know, because he's yeah. that kind of player. Um, and that's all he needs to do, right? Find that one hit and then kind of loop the offense, as we know in Street Fighter Six. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, the snowball in this game, the type of offensive sequences that you could put on your opponent time and time again, it just gets overwhelming a lot of the time, right? So if you're good at getting that first hit, and then if you're even better, if you're good at making those reads afterwards, I mean, you could just look like such a dominant player. Did want to jump to one oh four twenty? This is like the one moment I was like, I actually had to go and go into the lab and check. Like, I'm not crazy, am I? <laughs> Wait, well, what was the time stamp? Uh, a 104.20. Oh, 104.20, gotcha. Yeah, quite a bit on. Okay. Um, but look, sick reaction, right? Level two, not invincible, unlucky. But like, how? Why is everyone? How are you gonna react with level two and not react with a one button di? Like, I, I, like, I saw this and I was like, okay, <laughs> oh, I can't keep I chatting see. shit. Yeah, I yeah. need to check. I need to check here. Like, surely you can just level. You can just di this. And I went in the lab and you can DI as late as the first active frame of the charged heavy flash knuckle and you get the punish counter. Can yeah. I just see people start the on this, please? Thank you. Yeah, I remember <laughs> like, like he, he doesn't have level three, it's safe. Like, exactly. Ugh, like I was like, oh like I'd be bringing that up, and then I, I think it was Jake one time. He was like, bro, people are scarred from the level three cancel. And I, I was know. like, I was like, I, I guess. <laughs> I was like, that's all it could be at this point, right? Is that people yeah. are like scarred from when they tried to do that at the beginning and Luke would just cancel to level three. Because yeah. yeah, as you mentioned, I see Luke do this all the time without level three and it more nobody often. DIs it. Nobody they're, does they're it. doing it more often yeah. because they're like, oh, <laughs> they get away with it. Like maybe when they got level three a lot and they're like, okay, well, no one's ready for this. And then like, oh, what if we try it when we haven't got level three? <laughs> and yeah. then no one checks. Oh, it was, it was, I mean, to be funny enough, last week, like I think we missed last week, uh, week eight, basically. There was actually a set where someone did it about three times in a row. And I was like, finally. And guess what? <laughs> I think they won that set. So yeah, I know. what do you know? Uh, what do you know? What do you know? He's all good looking out, by the way. Thank you, my man. And then uh, so because of the way it played out, we had the best of one between Kaba and Flash, which, of course, best of ones. We always don't have too many notes. Um, I have like one timestamp on here. I, I was li I did say at the very beginning, I was like, Flash looks good in the matchup because of this forward heavy punch and slide. Um, which he did make a good amount of use of, but I really liked, let me see, it was at 106.55 here, so it's going to be coming up in a moment. I believe it was a, a perfect parry into Blanca Ball that uh, I was a big fan of. Yeah. yeah bam! Yeah, that's, that's joy the right there. Yep. Funny though, like, obviously it wasn't EX, don't know if it was meant to be, but I really like doing, like, perfect parry into, like, a light DP, for example, because yes. generally, like, your fastest buttons for that range. Yeah. It's just obviously incredibly unsafe. Mm -hmm. um so like for example gal his his light flash gets five frames and it goes like half the screen like it's yeah. huge um so i spent way too much in the lab at one point trying to lab like a like a trade combo with light flash kick uh because it puts them in like a juggle state it was it was quite funny i spent maybe about two hours trying to land something but it's just not it's like completely unrealistic like maybe in like some old street fight games that's fine to go for but in this game the damage is just too high like if you whiff a flash kick like you, you cooked and you're in the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, let me see. Oh, I, I did think I, I saw that there was, the only other thing I have is that I liked the round three start from Kaba because we've seen the forward heavy punch round starts from Flash Metroid. So he tries it again here, but Kaba does like, bam, quick, immediate 99 second drive rush to stuff the forward heavy punch around start, which is what Flash did in round one. So that's like the only other thing I really have down. But besides that, it was just, you know, he gets the first hit here. He combos into level three, and now it's you know trying to get on Guile when it's you're down forty percent. Yeah, it's it's tough. Yeah, this is like kind of what makes Gar so good. I think is that like, especially like any zoner like Dalton's kind of the same. You know, he lands the hit, uh, the second round, and then he hits it into level three. Yeah, good luck coming back in that round. Like it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I like. I mean, this, this is right? a great idea, right? Yeah. Honestly, yeah, this confirm I never seen it the punish counter blankable in an install be able to link it into the forward heavy punch. So like, I was like, damn. 
Mm. Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was some cool stuff at the end here. Like Flash definitely puts up a fight. It's just like he had to use all his meter to do it. And so at this point, like Kaba just needs to knock him away one more time, and he gets it. And yeah, he's just too solid of a guile player to be able to come back on a lot of the time when he has a lead like that. Yeah, yeah, it was close. Like I mean, I like the idea of the perfect parry on the boom, and then the immediate wild hunt. Like trying to, I think if he was close to that, might have gone over the top of the boom. I'm not sure. And I'd have to test that, but that would be a pretty sick punish. Definitely, definitely. So uh, next up we had was a Nasser versus a versus a Vortex. Punk versus NL was the one that started that one off for us. Let me see if I got the timestamp already here. Might be a, okay. So it was around 132.52. So yeah, definitely, uh, again, when you get like two players like this, it's always like so, like there's, there's so much to honestly talk about a lot of the time when it comes to two players like this. And uh, I already have this first note down where Punk goes for the drive rush cancel, obviously keeps it a tight string here, and then he goes for the shimmy. And I feel like I have this down because to me, this really illustrated the difference between Mena and Punk and the characters they play. Because I feel like Mena likes to establish throw early and then sit back and watch the opponent try to get in on Luke and just put up a wall and sandblast them to death. While Punk... Yeah, yeah. He's like, I play Cammy. Like, I'm trying to get in your face, <laughs> take you to the corner, and then make you guess over and over again, right? So uh, he's not really concerned about getting a life lead early and then sitting back and waiting. He wants to take you to the corner. So first thing he does is not yeah. a throw. He does a shimmy, takes you to the corner with it, and now you got to play Cammy's game. Yeah, I do think he, he's playing against now, and he knows that. And if you know now and you've watched him enough, like, this guy is doing something on Wake Up or in a reversal situation, like, every time. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's betting. He's ga like, he's keep gambling. Like, he's that meme, you know. Um, and, you know, more often than not, he's guessing right. And I think Punk kind of knows that he's going to do something right. So, like I said, if you force that error immediately, you get such a reward in this game that it's just worth going for. Yeah. Like, there's no reason why now He's in full health. He's mid-screen. Like, why would you... No, why would you tech there? But I mean, you know, that's just, that's just how he plays, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I have this down too, just because like, I feel like I never see this move with punish, this heavy kick from Cammy. And I was like, holy no, smacks, he actually did it. Up for that one. What's up? Oh, God. Like, that's how you know you, that you've gone messed up is when your opponent, they, they see you with your move, they walk up and then they <laughs> yeah. whip punish you. Yeah. They don't just like whip punish the normal. They, they walk in to make sure they ain't missing, you know? That's crazy. Yeah, it, it feels like she's uh, at an awkward range sometimes when people try to whiff punish, but doing that walk forward and the stand fierce that moves you forward, yeah. he was he made sure he got that. Yeah, it's one of those as well, like, especially that one kind of extends her, her box a bit forward. So if you do the stand fierce, you hit her a little bit early, it might make the confirm a little bit more awkward. Yeah, absolutely. It's true. It's definitely a, a funny thing when it comes to spacings and, spacings and buttons like that. They are kind of have funky hurt boxes and timings to them when they're actually extended. Let's see, I think this is like basically my first point here is like this whole round essentially. Okay. It's an L basically wins it with like three low forwards. That's all it is. He's playing footsies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he lands three low forwards and that's enough to like close out the game. And against a player like Punk who seemed to be like an absolute king of footsies is like very impressive because Super. you're never going to catch this guy like, you know, uh, you're not going to ever catch him slipping basically. Um, but I think it's also really smart to do against a player like Punk who does like to walk back a lot, right? Yes. And uh, like yes. to use that movement of Kami's. And hey, if you're very comfortable with that move speed, you can definitely walk into her range because you're going to be able to walk forward faster than she can walk out. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just like, again, versus a player like Punk, that's going to hurt. Like Punk's going to be like, oh, I can't move around. I'm not like, don't have the same freedom of movement yeah. after that round. And you can kind of feel it in the way he plays now because he's very much crash blocking way more. I, I think like... It's a, one of the riskier defensive choices, but I think the most successful defensive choice from my watching of Punk's matches is when people will crouch medium kick him. Like on wake up or yeah. like in these situations where you don't think to crouch medium kick, he is the, the shimigami as uh, Lee Chung puts it, right? Like <laughs> this man is always looking to get you to throw tech or whip something from close range. So if you got the goal, if you got the cojones to do it, a lot of the time that crouch medium kick ends up catching him walking back, like you said. Yeah, and it's uh, definitely something I think an Alan must have noticed, and you know, he did manage to take the round off of it. And obviously, the set was obviously mad close, came down to a real nail biter in the end. 
Yeah, it, it felt like overall some of my notes for this, uh, like that Punk's dive kick pressure was super good. L lots of uh, great spacings on the dive kick. And because he did it so much, it felt like he got a lot of jumps against NL. Not even just dive kicks, just like raw jumps. NL finally starts anti-airing a little bit, but he got a lot of free jumps without being punished for them just because of the dive kick. And, you know, we talk about that all the time with the freedom that that allows Cammy to, to go with in the air. Yeah, it's, it's a weird, like, no matter who, you, like how good of a player you are, uh, and if you could anti-air someone 100 percent of the time, if that character's Cammy, no, you can't. Like, yeah. if you try to anti-air 100 percent of the time, you're gonna get cooked sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it's worth like not even taking the risk, right? You just you get take the jump in, whatever. Uh, but at least you don't get blown up for it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, do you have any more timestamps here before I jump a little bit forward? I think I think this one might be jumping. Uh, a bit I think forward here. most of mine is right towards the end. Like okay. 30, like I think my next one's like one thirty-seven fifty. So okay. I think that's like towards the last game. Let's hit that. Let's hit the one thirty-seven fifty. Yeah. I think it was just a really clean walk back here on the yep. crouch medium punch mm -hmm. right there, which I love to see. Obviously, it's just a super optimal way if you know they're going to go for the throw and immediately ready for the punish as well so it's just a hard call out really from punk yeah like uh it, it's it's so interesting to me and i my latest like little breakdown highlight short video kind of goes over that type yeah. of info like and, and for whatever reason it was really prominent to me in this set uh the different like way drive rush buttons have evolved because like you said right he tries the driver's crash medium punch and then he's able to walk out of it when nl goes for the throw attempt at the beginning of the game a lot of our drive rushes we were letting them rock long enough to where if you tried to rock back like you didn't actually walk out of throw range now because people have gotten so good at checking drive rushes we have to press our drive rush buttons way earlier which means that they're not being blocked as close as they were before which opens the door for stuff like that and being able to a walk out of the range right like i, I have a timestamp here that yeah. nl does the same thing against punk where punk like goes for a quick drive rush button and because it's a quick drive rush button and he doesn't let it rock for a long time we see nl just walk right out of it yeah it's to start this round right like he goes like this is like pretty much not all the way max range jab but pretty close right she could be a lot closer yeah. if she wanted to and then he just walks out right walks out of the yeah. throw and like i yeah i have a video up to where like if you let that jab rock a little longer yeah exactly you're more at risk to getting checked on the dry rush right that's why people don't let it rock a little longer but if you do manage to get it closer even if he walks back he's still in throw range so it's just really fascinating to me to see that type of development in real time yeah, that is uh, that is really sick. Didn't think about that, but I mean, yeah, it's obviously it's like it's like the counter, the counter. Right? You do the dry yep. rush early button because you expect them to press that button in time and that yep. counter hit it, and that's kind of the mind games, which uh, definitely, you know, when you get to this high level, you're expected to have to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it's so funny because you you talked about that round where NL had like one off of three crouch medium kicks. I didn't even notice. A note I have <laughs> down later is NL is a sniper with crouch medium kick in this set. Like this is <laughs> verbatim what I oh, yeah. notes. Yeah, no, he's killing him. I mean, he definitely loves it on Wake Up as well. And I think uh, Punk blows up at some point. But um, but yeah, I mean, I think in the last round, actually, NL could have killed Punk, but he, he didn't realize, I don't think, because Punk was in burnout. He had the guaranteed stun setup um, and he didn't go for it because he didn't think it'd kill, I don't think. But uh, that did end up cost, well, potentially that was a mistake that cost him the entire set because obviously Punk makes an incredible comeback here. Yeah, yeah, definitely an incredible comeback. A couple of really dope moments here. I, I was like, Man, he didn't really, he didn't force the drive impact that whole time that NL was stunned. Obviously, he's not that close to the corner yeah. in some of these instances. But here, you could tell that like, he could force it, right? Like, he could get in with a drive rush. He could drive impact here. He doesn't do it at all. Instead, he waits till NL gets his gauge back and then does drive impact. Yeah. And I was like, are you just, like, playing expectations <laughs> against the opponent? Like, were you actually waiting for them to get their drive gauge back so they breathe a little bit easier about countering drive impacts? Like, I don't know if that was intentional, just the way the game flowed, but I was like, this dude's smart enough to do something like that. I mean, he was also obviously got on the pixel life, so I think if, if you DI'd anything, you died. So it probably was like, I needed, I need him to block something first. Yeah, that's and true. That's true. That. That's the, that's the first time I've ever seen Punk use Hooligan, and guess what? We're on in the set. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been asking this guy to use it for, for weeks, man. I'm like, come on, this, this move's so good. And of course, he busts it out. Like, that's the kind of player Punk is, though. Is like he he'll he'll create like he's so creative, right? And right there, obviously, 
what, for a cat, for a player who's never used this move in their life, <laughs> like what makes you think mm, I'm gonna use it right now? Yeah. yeah cooked <laughs> yeah and again like my latest video kind of goes into this in detail yeah, so if y'all want to check it out like go to my twitter go to my youtube my tiktok all literally all those things have the video it's the punk and nl hooligan video but just to go over what i talked about in that briefly so we see punk Bagdash here right while all the other drive rushes he does are mad close like that one we saw where he did drive rush jab this time he back dashes and he actually this is the farthest any drive rush takes place in this game it might be like not even just on punk side but nl i don't think did a drive rush from this far either so this is the farthest drive rush that nl has seen punk do in the set so he finally tries to check right he hasn't tried to challenge any yeah. of these drive rushes before because when it's that close from the space that punk was doing it a lot of the time your challenges you're not going to be able to react quick enough and they actually get counter hit themselves so Punk gives him that extra space to be like, dog, you can check this one. You can do it. I gave you the extra space. And then he just does OD hole again. And it just completely mine Fs him. It was perfect. I do love, though, that if if that hooligan was like maybe a couple frames earlier um, and he was still in recovery of the jab, <laughs> yeah. it would have whiffed. Yeah, it would have whiffed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would have whiffed right in front of him. Oh, <laughs> That's bit, what's yeah. so cool I mean, about everyone stands up too. there. Like, it, that hits everyone, I think. Yeah, you yeah. You don't have to feel bad if you're there now. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing, right? Is that, like, so many things could have happened that were little that could have made it go wrong. But it still went right. And it was just like, and, and of course you stand up. But just a couple of things could have uh, affected it and made them completely whiff. But not when it's punk, man. He just he just knows, right? It's just one of those things. And again, it, it works because punk's like never used it as well. Like yeah. if, if he'd used it a few times during that set, you do realize like the, 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 the overhead's pretty slow compared compared to like, you know, the, the grab. So like you generally will just duck and then check it um but in this case like yeah he just stands mm -hmm. up instant reaction not no thought there it's just yeah so this is the moment i think he could have killed was like in that round right there oh, okay, he, had, okay. he definitely had the stun set up uh, oh but yeah, I, yeah i think I he was this. afraid yeah he, he i think he was close to level two but he didn't quite have it so I, maybe he wasn't sure if he'd build it in time yeah so definitely a good stuff from punk obviously gave us an electrifying highlight to end that set and then we had Big Bird versus Sheehan up next. Uh, pretty pretty good win for Big Bird, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely had a lot of nice DJ Cal play. I think I've seen more and more people kind of have that. And uh, obviously, is Marissa still definitely one of the best in the game, even though he's got the Rashid now? Yeah, absolutely. And I like uh, that's the first thing that I had. It was uh, a lot of these jump back uh, normals. Obviously, we see him do it all the time. Uh, but I think they work especially well, like, nowadays, you know, but before you just get hit by the cross up and then you get smoked every time. Whereas now, because people have to be so scared of being perfect parried, especially when trying to cross you up out the corner, they're not going to press their button. So you get way more time mm -hmm. to, uh, to actually do these jump back anti airs. So even though Marissa's is definitely her best option because her anti airs are not the best, like other characters could definitely do this way more often. Like, I think uh, DJ is one of them, actually. He's uh, He's got a great target combo in the air similar to marissa's yeah who could yeah, definitely yeah. be used to keep up an opponent in the corner just like that one exactly yeah pretty much to the same thing yeah i mean i think the air to air like you said it's just so much more important especially with marisa obviously because like yeah. from certain ranges and timings it's tough for her to just anti-air but yeah like even if you do have good anti-airs sometimes the air to air is the way just to keep your opponent locked in the corner we see men do that all the time with luke and blanca like he's like i'm not even trying yeah. to do a cross cut dp with luke or anything like that i'm just trying to jump back button to keep you locked down in this corner and blanca a little bit more difficult of a time to anti-air your cross up so he especially just jump back buns with that character and he can air ball combo so it, it's so important in keeping people locked down in the corner for sure the uh one of the highlights hey, Marissa, I, that's where you want to be yeah exactly one of the highlights i had was at 150 30 i just thought it was a, a pretty impressive call out or gambit from big bird here like we see the pressure yeah it was just this right here i time stamped it a little bit prematurely but just uh, doing the air slasher, getting hit by it, and he's just like, I'm drive rushing on in, bro. Like, I do not care. <laughs> like, I don't know if it was like a tell that sw DJs tend to sway after like the heavy air slasher from there or what, and he just called it out like that. But I was just like, wow, he forced the issue, and he just had a had a big read. Enough. This is, I think, a moment that I really liked as well here. He, if we saw Shin do that neutral jump. He's done that neutral jump so many mm -hmm. times. 
Um, and he's basically scouted out in a situation exactly like this. He wants to see what Big Bird's trying to do whenever he neutral jumps. You know, a lot of people, it's hard to punish them, but they, they try and take their turn as you land. You want to drive rush, they're all, you know, there. He did a lot of fears, did a lot of the um, Superman punches to try and, like, catch him as he landed. Uh, so this time he does neutral jump and then immediately just cools. And again, there's that neutral jump again. Uh, and the just cool gets cooked. Uh, I mean, the just cool cooks the the check from yes. Big Bird. And like I said, he's been basically doing it the entire game and he found that one situation where it was going to work, when it was going to land. And the, there was one moment where Big Bird gets the better of him in a, in a neutral jump scenario that I really loved. And it's like around this time, uh, close to closing out the set, I think, where he empty jumps in and then she ends neutral jump and he perfect parries on the landing. Uh, I was like, wow. That's kind of clean, actually. Yeah, I was like, yo, you actually reacted with the perfect parry on the empty jump, on the neutral jump. Like, that was actually clean. Like, I was really impressed by, by that from Big Bird. Yeah. Yeah, no, Big Bird definitely, definitely played a lot uh, very well, I won't lie. Boom. Closing out with that level three. Clean. That was only like one of the moment I wanted to highlight. It's just like a 151.25. Um, that was just a nice little adaptation. We saw this situation earlier, I believe, uh, after I think he does the stand jab TC or something into the Gladius. Yeah. And then here, last time he got hit by that. This time he walks back just a little bit. Obviously, Xian was like, hey, it worked last time, right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> But that's kind of the important thing when you're playing against a high level player is like you know whatever happened last b b before might not happen might not work this time so yeah that's super clear i love that the walk back just like you said yeah. informed by the context of the situation when it came up before uh yeah perfect stuff from big bro i really liked the way he looked in that set and then next up last set in the what was it to the nasa versus versus vortex round of matches was angry bird versus dcq yeah, this was a, a bit eye-opening for me, honestly. I didn't really... Obviously, DCQ's been doing really well. He's normally been the anchor for for his team. But then I, I sort of... I don't know if it was this match. I'll have to go back and watch his other matches. But he's playing JP really weird. <laughs> <laughs> the, how I described it is that he's put, like, a heavenly restriction on himself, you know? Like, oh, straight out of JJK. And he's like, <laughs> oh... I won't use OD Amnesia. I won't do OD Drip Fireball. I won't use level two. And in exchange, I get a what, check all drive rushes for free or something. I don't know, I don't <laughs> yeah. know what he's got out of this. But I literally, I counted this set. Not a single OD Amnesia, not a single level two. Um, wow. And no OD Fireball. I was like wow. outside of a combo, I think. But like, how, how do you play a JP like that? Like, is he like, I tell you, these guys, this character isn't busted. I promise, guys. Like, look, <laughs> I won't use all the busted things. I'll make it fair for you guys. I mean, how is he still winning games? I don't know. Maybe JP is that good. Yeah, but right. like, it's so crazy because you just don't see JP players do this. And the best way to describe it is like DCQ is like, like extremely meter conscious, essentially. For the sure. entire way he plays is like to not lose meter, mm -hmm. which probably works against a lot of players. But versus Angry Bird, who's just obviously, you know, Evo Champ, he's he knows how to beat that kind of conservative yeah. play style. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of time, like against Angry Bird, you're gonna need to show him as many tools and options yeah. as possible. So you can make him think about more and more to kind of wear on that mental game because he's so strong mentally. This is uh, the on this week's edition of Did He Do This on Purpose? I want you to tell me, <laughs> was this drop on purpose to burn out Big Bird or Angry Bird? I, me. I actually like when you know, I saw that as I was talking, I was like, wait, was that on purpose? <laughs> like That's why I was like, that's this, this week's edition of did they do that on purpose? Because I have no idea. I want to say, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, it must have been right, because like, it's not like he did the wrong one. Yeah, like, yeah. That, surely that, that would never work. Like the sand heavy into the heavy <laughs> trip log, like would never work so he unless he just randomly pressed the wrong yeah. strength which is unlikely i guess that was on purpose yeah so i was like all right all right we got we got a successful did he they do that on purpose apparently yes i will we'll go with the, the rule yeah, for we'll this see. week i mean realistically he could have done stand face into di and then literally burn him out that way as well so it's hard to tell <laughs> for sure for sure about well, my next timestamp is like at 5801 do you have one before that um Kind of like, I think it was in the first moment of the game. It's not really okay. too important. It's like 156.25. 
It's basically like obviously with all the with all the downplay coming in from the Ken players. Uh, no offense, <laughs> but like I just want to say, you know, Dragon Lash is still incredibly busted for mm -hmm. this exact reason. Like, yeah. look at the range the tippy toes reaches him, and guess what? Ooh. He's still in throw range. What other move does this? Yeah. Like, I don't. Th I can't think of a single other move in like in many of the fighting games where it's like if it's spaced, it dra it makes sure it drags you into throw range. Yeah, like, like look at the way lands, he just like. Yeah, 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 the way he lands. It does not exactly. look like he should be. Yeah, it should not. Does not look like he should be in throw rage. How? I mean, this is either the microest of micro walks, but I don't think so. I think that's nah. just the, that's how the move works. Yeah, I, I was think... like, that move is crazy. Like, I don't care. A hundred percent. A hundred percent is still crazy. Like, it's one of those things that it's like, even if they come easier to react to, like you still have to think about so many things that you're not gonna react to everyone and just like not reacting to one can open up so many bad things for you and so many good things for the Ken player. Um, let me see the uh, next one I have here, I think is around 150. Oh yeah, I said 158, right? So I just liked this. It is nothing too crazy. I just really like this trade. Uh, huh? I thought the trade was crazy and I thought Angry Birds processing time. This I thought was crazy trade. Oh. I was like, G give me a break, crouch okay. medium punch. Maybe like. Ken's fireball really does suck. <laughs> like, I was oh, like, yeah, this is actually, this is like the, the crouch medium punch being godly and also fireball being so bad. Yeah. So I was <laughs> just like, give me a break at this trade, right? But then the processing speed of Angry Bird, and to be fair, I think Angry Bird likes doing this behind fireball anyway. He, he always does like run step yeah. kick. But like just, yeah, off of a trade scenario, I thought that was such a good thing to do just to catch your opponent off guard and get in their face off of a weird moment. And it's just like, now you have to deal with me. And a lot of the time when your your natural reactions are just going to be a moment late like there and it, it results in a counter hit. And I mean, step kick's also just incredibly fast, like that so kind good. of range. So it's going to so interrupt good. basically any of JP's buttons. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think my next point was at 159.40. But if you want to oh, think okay, before. Yeah. No, no, mine's not. Uh, so, so this one is like more like this will be on the test later. So just pay attention <laughs> now. <laughs> but this is a moment where I kind of looked at it once and then it, something similar sort of happened. A situation sort of happened earlier. I originally was like, oh, DCQ, that was a really sick, like, you know, he, he does the, he gets the counter hit, realizes he's not in range for the pickup and just uh, waits for the, mm. to the button to come out and yes. then gets a whiff punish. He doesn't confirm it, but you know, yeah, you know, we can't all be good. Uh, but, <laughs> but I, you know, I want to, I wanted to ask you, why do you think Angry Birds mashing here? Like, he's he, is he the Evo Ooh, champ, okay. just a masher, and he's mashing on hit? <laughs> or what, what do you think? He's, what do you think he's looking for here with that low forward? So yeah, to me, that's like straight reversal out of hit stun. Yeah, like th that's the one you're talking about, right? Right, they're the one that, yeah. are, or both of them really are kind I of. Mean, yeah, funny enough, it happens again. He does yeah. it straight out of hit stun again. The second one, we won't, we, won't, we, won't, we don't think about that one because that yeah. one doesn't matter about for later, but. <laughs> I'll test you guys. I'll test you on it later. But this similar situation happens later, but the other opponent doesn't press the low forward, and, and uh, I'll tell you why. Why you actually press the low forward here? Okay, okay, okay. So uh, to me, like uh, the crouch medium kick from JP, it's not like it's not cancelable, right? And then uh, when it was yeah. it? on block, it's minus three. On hit, it's plus three. So uh, from mm -hmm. that range, even on counter hit. Like, I don't know if the jab will reach. Like, what's what's his startup of his main jab? It's like stand frames, medium right? normally or something like that. Or yeah. that punch counter, doesn't he? Well, yeah, yeah so, he normally do the jab or something so, like that. So, like, the crouch light punch would be the the only thing because maybe the stand light kick, I guess you could maybe try to link that. Maybe that has enough range. But I just think he recognizes oh, yeah. that from that distance, whatever he's going to follow up with is probably not a combo and yeah you're a ken player so you just see if you're outside of <laughs> if you're outside of light range and they're not gonna combo you and they're not at big plus frames then you just you just do crouch medium kick okay okay, okay. you know what I mean? like Fair that enough. that's how i feel we'll wait for it to come back up but yeah it's okay. something interesting to note because i originally i was like oh these that was really sick like because he kind of waits because he kind of knows he'd be mashing but why does yeah. he know he's gonna be mashing yeah yeah, yeah true yeah right yeah, it just feels like one of those things where, like, off of the crouch medium kick, I think that's such a big thing when it comes to JP matches. Like, the decisions yeah. made after crouch medium kick on both sides, for the opponent and JP, I think dictates a lot of success when it comes to the matchup and how it plays out. So, to me, there's, there's a lot of gambits that usually happen after crouch medium kick so i think that's why dcq was kind of ready he was like angry bird i feel like is a very active player he's one that takes his turn back constantly too i think that's something yeah. he's probably the best at is taking his turn back and he does it like with the right button at the right range at the right time so often that i think he's the best 
So I just think DCQ was like, this dude likes the challenge. He likes to be active. Yeah. So from that range, he probably wasn't going to get another button. So he was like, he's a goddamn Ken yep. player. He's going to press crotch medium kick. <laughs> walks back and gets it. Yeah, <laughs> like how you put it in the chat. <laughs> so, yeah. That is exactly what it was. Uh, I mean, that was like kind of basically my last kind of point. The rest of it is okay. I was just more like confused. I was like, uh, why? where's the OD Amnesia? Where's level two? Like and even <laughs> on hits, like... He'll get a hit. He won't use OD Fireball because he, I guess he thinks the two bars is not worth like the screen control. Maybe he thinks like uh, Angry Birds, you know, too good of a player, like being full screen is not actually much of an advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, again, it was just like the, the no level two. And then there's at some points he'd get an early hit on the round. Um, he'd have a level three stocked up and he wouldn't spend it. And again, it's just like no other JPs do that. They just spend the level three because it's so good to be, you know, full screen with that much life advantage. But but yeah, I just I was just trying to figure it out. I had to go back and like try and watch some other games he's played. Yeah, yeah, that, that's always uh, like something that I love have that happens when you're watching videos, trying to analyze stuff. Is like you see a moment that you're like, all right, I gotta go back and watch other matches because there's gotta be something <laughs> yeah, that informed this missing. moment, right? Yeah, <laughs> like there's gotta yeah. be something that informed this decision here. Like at first, I was like, okay, you use the threat of like OD amnesia, that so you don't have to use it. But you, you mean you kind of have to use it at some point. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. Um, so one of the other timestamps I have here to uh, kind of build on that point we were talking about earlier with um, dry rushing from close range, because like dry rushing from far away now is just so hard to actually do successfully. I just wanted to, to bring up this point as a, like an illustrator. This might be the wrong timestamp, actually. Let me double check here. Okay, yeah, it was. All right, so we're going to jump a little bit forward. So, like, what we talked about earlier, right, where it, well, it wasn't even that one. We'll, we'll get to another thing in a, in a minute here. Let me see. Am I messing up again, bruv? Sorry about that, bro. Um, isn't that where I was at? Okay, I'm tripping. I, I I had the the thing open, but now I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, let me. Hmm. I might just have to move on here. I think it happens in uh, the previous round. Let me double check. Is it off this here? Yeah, so this is it right here. My bad. Uh, All right. right. So, like we talked about, like, Punk had been only drive rushing from a very close range, right? So he can uh, pretty much counter hit a check attempt like this. And now everybody's getting so good that when you drive rush from far away like this, like, he even does it in response to a whiff button, right? I think that's why he's like, all right, I can, I can come on in. I see the big whiff button. But, like, from this range, people are just so good at checking at this point. You see, that was, like, the same timing that NL had for his crouch jab to try to check the hooligan attempt. So, when you're drive rushing from that far now, it just feels like you kind of have to have something like a suppressor or a HP flash snuggle or something that's going to get yeah. around these initial check attempts. Yeah, and you, you kind of have one in the in the heavy dragon lash. You can stop the momentum, but it, it's not like the suppressor. It's like too yeah. slow to punish like a check usually. So it's more you just get a turn. Uh, but yeah, that was just clear. I mean, the stand jab's a great choice as well. Obviously, it's kind of on the slower side, but again, you kind of want to press these slower buttons sometimes because uh, right there, it's so active. He kind of walks into it. And uh, whereas mm -hmm. if you played as like if he tried to press a crouch jab, he probably gets whiff punished there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one, like, it wasn't really a gameplay analysis moment I had, but one that I, like, never see come up, very strange moment, was here at, like, 206. We'll go back. I just want to touch on this real quick. Where we see a spike hit during a drive impact. You see that? Wait, I can't hear Lazarus. Hello? Yep, hello. Okay. Sorry, you were, like, going a little robot -y for a second. I think oh, think okay. Back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Me or you, but and yeah, I saw my my frames did drop. Okay, so it was my bad. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, the, this was a moment I just don't see it come up a lot. Like I've seen, yeah. Like this, this isn't some like crazy read or gameplay thing. It's just him reacting to Dragon Lash. But during the drive impact, the spike hits, 
and then just pushes him over, not giving the actual hit stun. I was like, whoa, I do not see that happen a lot. Yeah. I think uh, that sort of comes up later, I think, with the level two for, I think, uh, in the yeah. JP mirror we got later on. Mm -hmm. But I can imagine that's kind of the harder part of playing JP is, like, actually getting these conversions. So, to be fair, you do see JP players, for the most part, do land them. So yeah. you got to give them I gotta give him some props. For sure. <laughs> and then uh, the only other time step I had besides the finish was 207.15, which was one of those situations where it's like, <laughs> the drive rush crouch medium punch from jp is so good and it's one of those moves that has a big destroying hitbox so it actually does end up hitting a lot of people's light check attempts so he's like one of those characters that can yeah. actually get away with a farther range drive rush because of that so i love the just the adjustment from angry bird right here he was like i'm not gonna try to check you from that far i'm just gonna walk back and whiff punish like i, I felt yeah. like that was super good because he had tried the check earlier on in the game early on in the set and he just kept getting counter hit so i love adjusting right there and just waiting for it yeah and it's uh definitely something extremely hard to do by the way like imagine 99 percent of other matchups you just press your, your, your check button um and then now you gotta overwrite your muscle memory just because mm -hmm. you're playing against jp right you gotta think okay i gotta now every time i see that drive rush which is by the way you got very little time to react to i have to choose a different option than my usual one like that's not easy yeah, I'm so glad you brought that point up because that's really what makes it difficult is because you train yourself so hard. It's like the DI thing when you're low on health and you can't DI yeah, back yeah. anymore and you have to switch your muscle memory to parry. Like you've been training so hard to do this one thing against like 99% of the options. And then the one option comes up that you no longer can do that thing to have that discipline, to have the recognition, to be able to change that in the moment. I mean, that's what makes these top level fighting game players yeah absolutely like it's just also you just how much you played the game right like yeah. if you've played the matchup against jp that much then your muscle memory versus jp really is just to walk back you know it is like one of these things um but obviously of course even champ probably played a good amount of street fighter 6 already yeah. i'd like to imagine <laughs> yeah you, you would think so right <laughs> definitely i, I have definitely to imagine like it. i have to imagine he's uh, top five in most played hours like in the world like he just <laughs> Probably. I I think so. Like you know, I mean, just the luxury of having Big Bird there and them living together. Yeah, that's true, and just actually, like, very true. They they've had to. Oh, see, so this is profession essentially right now. Yeah, so. straight up. Like they they, they cool. treat it like a nine to five. Like they treat it like an actual job. You know what I mean? So that's uh, why he has so much success as well, though. So big ups to Angry Bird. I love the finish as well. The drive rush jab, little walk back, big money button for Ken with the stand fierce into the OD Dragon Lash. Just a cool flashy can way to end it and of course nasser once again running a muck over the competition and then i think for our last set we had red rooster versus uyu and what was our versus dual kevin yeah uh which is definitely like again might be my two favorite uh, players to watch throughout the season uh especially dual kevin's gotten incredibly good over the past nine weeks and again shown up today and like i mean he it's one of these players that like when he's like good and when he does something amazing it's like wow he's like changed the game uh and then yeah. if he could play like that consistently like he'd be one of the best like easily but it's, it's he just has like flashes of genius as well call him a hundred percent you know i only got a couple of timestamps for this one because it just felt like for me dual kevin okay. was a, a wall of defense like I, I one of my notes is that i would have liked to yeah. see rog throw more because I feel okay. like Dual Kevin is one of the most defensive players I see in Street Fighter VI. Like, he is willing to block stuff out more often than not. I feel like more often than a lot of players yep. in comparison. So that's one of my notes. I just would like to see more throws from Rog to try to exploit that. Yeah, I mean, he, for me, this is the guy who who I saw first saw do that, like, the offensive driver vessel in the corner, which is, you know, classic defensive yeah. move, right? You have yep. to block to get it out. Rather than trying to frame trap, I'll just guarantee my offense and... You know, because if you manage your resources correctly, you should be able to do that pretty reliably. And he does, again, do it in this set as well. Uh, so definitely showing how effective that strategy can be. And uh, uh, I didn't have too many timestamps either, to be fair. Yeah. But, uh, I think my first one was at like 2.38. Okay, again, so... my notes are not the best <laughs> for this because I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah, it's <laughs> all I... good. Um, one of the notes I have that's uh, before that is right here. And it, it kind of okay. goes back to what we were saying, right? It's the same joint where we talk about the drive rush meta and how it's evolved. You see the drive rush jab here. <coughs> and Dual Kevin does a great job. I think the way he punishes this, to me, it feels like he immediately recognizes at this moment 
that to get an actual throw off, PR Rock is going to have to move forward. He's like, he's going to have to. And I think recognizing right. when the opponent's going to have to move forward to get the throw is super important because he yeah. just goes with a jab, right? You see the throw <laughs> start up and he just beats it. And I think he yeah, presses yeah. it because he knows he's going to have to move forward. He can't just raw throw him from that range. Yeah, for sure. And that's kind of, again, we talked about it, right? The weakness of having to press those buttons early so you don't get checked. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, that's why, like, that's why I love that. I, I want to make a video that kind of goes over the light yeah. meta and the, the, the drive rush stuff like that, because that, like you said, it's a consequence of that. It's a consequence of people getting good at checking drive rush. So we can't let the drive rushes rock as long. So because of that, yeah. they're blocked at a farther distance. So then you now have to walk forward if you're trying to tick throw. Like, it's just so cool mm -hmm. to see how it's developed. And it, it's all because of the players getting better and the way they're dealing with situations. Like, it's so cool to me. Yeah, I think that's a good way to describe it. I think as well, it's like a great example of like organic game design. Because I, yes. I can't I can't imagine this. They thought about like, even though we know how well hard they worked on Street Fighter 6 and how well thought out, like pretty much everything has been. I can't imagine they really expected the meta to evolve this fast or in this direction. Yeah. So like that is just one of those organic game design things. Where it's like, oh, yeah, Drive Rush is really strong. OK, I'm doing it a lot. All right, I got to check it. It's like, all right, well, if I press my button early enough, I can actually catch your extended hurt box of your check button and then punish you. Right. Yeah. And it's like it's one of those things where now it's like, oh, what's the counterplay to that? Well, now the Drive Rush long range jab is not quite as good as if when you just do it when you're right next to someone. So you got a lot more time to react and you know, it's, it's, it's a great example of that and something that makes, you know, Street Fighter 6 so deep. Yeah, absolutely. That was a really, really sick stuff overall from uh, from Dual Kevin in this set. Uh, the only other yeah. timestamp that I have is here. I, I'm not exactly sure if this would have been correct or not. I got It's like at 20. Well, what's yours? So mine's 20, uh, 238, basically. 238, okay, okay. Mine's a little bit later under 238, so let's go to yours first okay. here. This is what I mean by like flashes of genius is this whole sequence here. Like, I mean, the perfect parry, great. I mean, great decision making again to get the eye per perfect parry punish. And here, I love just going for the overhead. Like mm -hmm. he's in burnout, no parry, right? And if you know, you know, PR Balrog or just most players in that situation, they're going to block and wait for the DI and react. So if you yep. just give them nothing to react to in terms of like uh, the block button, well, oh. yeah, the overhead's just so smart of a choice. Yeah, you know, I didn't think about it like that. Like, yeah, like a lot of the time here, players are just going to default to like a drive rush medium into drive impact, right? And it, yeah. it's like, now you, you're you just trapped. And he was like, nah, overhead, take it that way. I, yeah, that's a good point. And then, yeah, obviously he's super plus frames. If PR Ball Rock does block it anyway, his turn's going to keep going. I, I didn't think about it in that sense. Uh, that's a good way to put it. Kind of the thing where if your opponent's looking for one thing, like they'll completely miss this. Like yeah. even though the steer hurts reactable and whatnot, like you have to be looking for it. Yeah, absolutely. So the the next thing I had here was Oof. I believe dual Kevin again, like you mentioned, uh, the great look at that drive gauge. Through. Sorry, like right here, like yeah, look at the, he's at Bam. six bars immediately down to one, like, like off of one basically good it, offensive sequence it's or crazy. defensive sequence, I should say. Yeah, look, drive also this here. boom. So actually, do you mind if we go back a sec? I do want to point that out again. I don't even realize it now, but he's done this setup twice with this jump heavy punch here. Yes. Um, and Dual Kevin kind of, he, he DP'd it regularly before because it's not a safe jump. You don't have to OD DP. Mm -hmm. um, and this time he walks forward. If you walk forward for a frame, you're out of the corner, by the way. So here, he needs that one frame. He's out of the corner. I don't know if he meant to take that intentionally, but he just gets hit. He's out of the corner. And then wait, look, just six bars down to one in literally like a second. I feel like it was just because like he then he looks for the drive reversal, right? He's like, all right, there's the drive rush cancel. Drive I think reversal. he tried to cross cut out. I think I'm pretty sure he tried okay. to cross cut DP there. That makes and sense. And that's why he got hit because he's crouching uh, um, and the DP didn't come out in time. So okay. yeah, I'm pretty sure because I know you can do that. Uh, it's, it's pretty tight timing, I imagine. But yeah. So and then uh, my moment is uh, pretty much right here. So PR Balrog gets burnt out. And I think, does he do a super or he gets like some type of hit? I think he does like level one. Yeah, so he does level one here. The only thing that I was thinking of in my last note is that I wonder if he does level two here. Like if it works out better because then he could like do a sequence where the attacks will build the drive gauge back up. So you might uh, yeah. like not be in burnout as long if you go into level two because of that. 
that's really the only thing I was thinking of because it, it felt like here he was still a little bit a little bit handicapped after that but obviously he gets back to drive gauge so it wasn't a a huge round deciding decision that he didn't do it but I just wonder if that will like actually build him back of the drive gauge that much quicker probably would i just i don't know if i've seen pure balrog use level two before yeah, yeah. so it's you one know, of those things where it's like, like that, yeah. it's un not like you know blanker where you, you're playing that character for that level two it's more like uh you know if you're playing jury some players might like to use the level two i know and but you also need to have used it to know how to use it yeah so it's one of those things where it's like he probably could have but he probably didn't know how <laughs> yeah yeah exactly all right i also love that ending by the way of course using the level three to blow up that gap in yeah. that heavy uh the heavy uh i can't remember exactly what the move's called but um we saw him close out the game there and then at the end of here he kind of knows what he's going for again and he's like well there's a gap here I'm like all right yep. like, he basically showed you how to win and he took that opportunity it was, it was pretty sick yeah yeah super clean from dual kevin right there exactly not letting uh, pr ball rock just get free pressure on him saw the stocks being used new to keep himself safe, he was going to have to do something afterwards and just completely blew it up. Yeah. So next up, we had Ajax Fidelity. More jury action up against the Knuckle Dew. And what a opening round this was, to be <laughs> honest. Oh, man. Uh, I, I kind of want to let this round play out <laughs> in its entirety because I thought Ajax okay. played so good until he got burnt out. And then it, <laughs> it was just legitimately a massacre from there. Yep. I mean, again, that's what I was talking about when I was saying, hey, look, you know, this character, like, with, I mean, Luke with the, with the fireballs, like, when your opponent's in burnout, kind of struggles, you know, whereas Guile is like, oh, you're in burnout, he becomes a mix-up machine, and, <laughs> yeah. like, like, you can't contest him, he, he's chipping you out, and he's got plus frames, and he's approaching you, and you got to take strike throw, and it's just like, oh, God, get me out. Yeah, it's just like good luck, a good luck, fam. Right, so I, re I really love it. Ajax playing well this whole time, right? He's a, he's got a nice little lead on Do. He's been able to get some drive rushes. He's been dealing with fireballs well. You can see the parries coming out, really, really doing all well. But he has been pretty low on drive meter this whole time, and that drive rush can't so bad. Like he he uses it here Oof. to get the back throw, and it's like okay, I don't mind it that much because then you put Do one striker throw away from death. But against Guile, he's one of those characters, man, where. It might not be worth it. No matter how low you get this person, you might not be worth going in a burnout against him like a JP. Because we see here, right? He goes for the overhead. Oh, heartbreaker, bro. Oosh. Overhead yes. gets thrown. And then from there, it's all over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is that is kind of the issue. I mean, definitely had. Could have done some things here with the level one, for example. But again, on top of the booms, it's so hard to like know when you can level one. Yeah. Because... Uh, obviously you're not invulnerable so it was just yeah. it was one of those situations where that burnout would have been fine if the throw could kill but if it, if it didn't I think you had to like try and go for the frame trap there instead yeah 100% so that was a heartbreaking way for it to start but credit to Ajax he really didn't let that get him down like he played super well I thought uh, the whole set in this first game I think do able able to take it but in the second game uh, he stops giving him easy flash kicks like there was a lot of strings that just got exposed by do with the flash kicks stopped doing those he had some really great crouch medium kicks at max range that caught do off guard so he, he definitely turned it around and uh, my next timestamp is around 47 38 do you have one before that that 47 30 so ah, okay so it's probably so this is actually uh, this is like the this is the quiz. This is where I was, what I was coming oh, back to. Oh, okay, okay. So, like, this is a moment where I saw it. I was like, oh, wait. If you know, if you, depending on how well you know your opponent's character, like, you can blow people up so well. And it was a big missed opportunity because basically, Gar, that's a counter hit combo right there. Is like the, the Sobat. If you mm -hmm. jump back a few seconds, counter hit Sobat into that, into that stand light. And if you know, that's never going to reach. So, oh. to me, when I saw Angry Bird press there, he mm -hmm. saw he got counter hit, but he saw he was pretty far away. Yes. So, he thought, wait what if my opponent tries for the counter hit confirm they're not close enough if i have immediately reversal button i get a huge whiff punish mm -hmm. and right. like to me i was like oh like if you know that because when i saw that i was like oh yeah you just press and you get the counter hit and then, and then obviously ajax didn't press because he didn't know like obviously that was a counter hit confirm um that would whiff at that range so it's yeah. like one of these things was like if you played the game enough like angry bird or, or someone like that or if you're really at the top of your game like that's a huge opportunity you could definitely snipe away and realistically if you got that hit you could have won the round right agreed yeah, yeah totally like it's one it's of one those, of those it's, it seems so minor but in the grand scheme of things that's a that's a round win yeah if you're ready for it 
Yeah, and, it, and it's you, one of those things. All you have to do is reversal burn, and it's always going to whiff punish because of like how the frame there works. Exactly. That's the kind of the point I wanted to bring up is that it's one of those things, too, that it's like there's no reason not to do it because exactly. they either actually do get the confirm and it doesn't matter what you're doing because you're getting comboed or they miss it and you get the punish. Like, there's really no reason not to. It, it just requires, like you said, an immense knowledge of playing against certain characters and whatnot. But definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Super sick here. And then the thing I actually wanted to point it out was right after this. And to me, <laughs> dude, so he gets the knockdown here, right? And he goes for the mm -hmm. side switch. And it feels like he gets a little caught off guard by the back tech. Like, and I don't know if he did get caught yeah. off guard by the back tech. And I don't know if it's just like one of those things where he's used to players immediately waking up. Like, or it's not a delay wake up. It's a back tech. They take the same amount of frames. But if he's just used to people waking up in his face because it's Guile and people don't want to give Guile that extra space. So he was like, all of a sudden, like, what? You're back teching? And I, I, he tried to, like, walk forward a few frames, get a throw or something. And it just let Ajax press a button and beat him to whatever he tried. So I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the funkiness was there, but it, it felt like there was funkiness there to me. I mean, it looked like he dashed to me. So I think... Was it a it, it, look, I, if I'm a gal player here, what you do after that cross up mm -hmm. is that you do drive rush low short, and it's a and it's a meaty. So in my like my humble opinion, I think he maybe tried to do like he was just buffering the the drive rush input, and he was like, oh shit, I'm in burnout. Mm, oh. <laughs> it could be anything. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like that's what I would think is like I did the cross up. He's like, oh oh shit, that was the meter. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point that's but you're point. right i mean it could be anything yeah i, I just found a, a little funky right there so i was like oh that's weird um and then uh, the next timestamp i have here is 4847 which is man empty jumping is real important in this game i'll tell you what <laughs> Because he doesn't empty jump, and then it's pretty much it's the thing that leads Ajax to his little round sequence in. Because yeah, you see the whiff button right there. Like jury's yeah. literally looking at him, like, it's why cooked. are you pressing a button, bro? Like gets the punish counter on Mistake. the throw. And and I love this from here. I love this from Ajax doing the overhead and doing the throw after because her throw launches you to the corner. It don't matter where you're at on the screen, you're in the corner after the throw. And then it's I mean it's done. It's checkmate. Like, there was nothing Duke could do after that. Normally, you always see that throw as, like, a huge weakness that pushes her so far away, and she has to spend drive rush. Yeah. But, like, in yeah, this never instance, mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In this instance, it was a huge strike. It sets sure. up perfectly for, uh, yeah, the, the checkmate, essentially. I mean, <laughs> not had so little me to work with. Like, it would have been a while before he could get in that situation. But, I mean, yeah. it was almost out of burnout. So, yeah, if you had to, like, dash up to do that, you, you might recover. So that was, that was definitely dope stuff. Dope stuff from Ajax right there. Yeah, Pulling out a big dub. Pretty good play. Yeah, especially, you know, that's a bad, like, he counterpicked that matchup. And I was like, that's brave. Like, you're not going to do <laughs> yeah. Guile. Like, what are you thinking, bro? Maybe no one else wanted to do it. And he's like, fine, I'll do it. And he just come out and won. So clearly, he was prepared. Yeah, big ups. Big ups to Ajax for sure. Stepping up to the play, knowing he was capable of taking home the dub for his team and carrying out the mission. And of course, it feels like these dudes, they just always want to play the mirror <laughs> for some reason. Banana Kid and yep. VX bow yeah, themselves. Yeah, this is a so like when I after watching that set with DCQ, I was like, okay, let me let me see how these guys play, and I'm like, let me see if I'm tripping or something. Like maybe <laughs> the, maybe the, everyone's playing GP role or whatever. And I was like, all right, immediately Banana Kid gets knocked down in the corner. First thing he does, OD amnesia. I'm like, all right, we're back. No no binding vows here. And then, I mean, his first game, there's not much to say. It's a double P. I'm like, oh, he's, bro, this, and he's used level two, like, twice in a round. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this is, he's he's not heavenly restricted. He's, like, opening his domain expansion, bro. This is, yeah. That's what the level two is. He's like, Jesus, you, this is, no restrictions, no limits, bro. Literally. is guaranteed hit, guaranteed mix-up. You're cooked. Okay, so, uh, yeah, and uh, like you said, the double P. And not only did he double P him, but he ended the double P with the banana cake. Oh, I was like, bro, the second time. you two, actually two times. Both, both rounds were ended like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you point blank <laughs> command grab the guy that point blanks command grab people. You really try to send a message, bro. Yeah, I was like, ah, yeah, that's that's the, that's the JP I'm used to seeing. Yes. So I was like, oh, okay, back to normality. So, uh, Jesus. Something I, I, I want to run by you because I, I heard through the through the vines the whispers because I, I was I saw 
Banana can do this level two sequence. After VX Bao did this level two sequence. Uh. And they both got opened up. And I was like, but I feel like every time I see this level two, it's the same thing. And people always get hit by it. <laughs> What's the issue? I've been told through the streets that this is, uh, if you do it from this sequence, it is unparryable. And I mean, nothing's unblockable in this game, but it's as close as you can get. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it's basically a hard to block. I'm pr like, if there's, there's got to be a, front, like a gap. No, maybe there is. There, there, uh, yeah, and that's why I was I like, there's got to be a gap, right? But then I looked and I looked at all the spaces and I was like, I don't yeah, think there actually is. Right. Like, I know he can do a gapless string for like burnout and stuff. But I didn't know he could get a mix up off of it like that. Like, oh God. I mean, I knew he could get on unblockable if you're like in, in, uh, if you get level two from like, uh, on a certain like knockdown setup, you get sent full screen, especially if you're in burnout, there's like nothing you can do. Um, but I didn't know he just gets it like straight up. Okay. I'm learning something new today. So yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like, I was like that had, there has to be some truth to that because they both just ate this. Like yeah. neither of them tried to parry, neither of them tried to do anything. They just both ate it. Like, so I, yeah, it's something that I want to take the, I haven't taken it to training mode yet. I want to, to really try to find if there's anything that you could do. But the last I heard in the streets is that setup is incredibly difficult to get out of. Oh, this is where you like, you almost have to parry on wake up then, don't you? Because if you get caught not parrying, they instill that level two. Like, well, good luck. Yeah. Like... I mean, there is, I think it it must be difficult to set up because I think uh, in, towards the end, Banana Ken goes for it again. But then VX Bad does get like a parry off in between. Yes. Or something like that. Yes. Uh, th th there so... was something where it was like, yeah, he, he got a parry out where I was like, oh, okay, maybe there there is something that you could do. I think it's they... like, you have to do a very specific like knockdown or something for it to work. But... Yeah. Let's see okay so the uh the next one i got is around 25524 uh yeah i think mine's at 255 just like uh i can't remember what it is it's like a just i think it's a fairly generic di but it's a really good way to blow up the um is that 255 i believe yeah it's 255 not right is it oh is it oh well, maybe oh it must have been before then oh like the okay like okay, must, I think it was the end of that round or towards the close. I'm oh, probably sure. that one right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll probably be it. Oh, yeah, like here, yes, yes. I mean, your parents have burnt out anyway, but like, I mean, that TC is notoriously like very safe. Mm -hmm. um, but they usually cancel it or do something towards the end of it. So, but that does mean there's a gap, which is cool. Definitely uh, a nice way to beat it. Yeah, I, I like that a lot because as you mentioned, they're out of burnout and you might as well throw it out there even if they don't commit to it and then if they do commit to it then huge huge punish for sure so i, I really like that as well and then uh the next one i have yeah so it's about right here yeah I, I think it was that moment where i was just like this just felt like a lot of um experience in the jp matchup like this man got counter hit into ghost and was like i'm holding up forward like yeah it just completely worked right like Banana Ken was already committing to another ghost right there. It just felt like something yeah. that he had seen a I lot. Think, yeah, that is a situation that happens a lot. You get punished, countered, they buffed it into the low ghost, and they're yeah. like, oh, I kind of, in their head, they're like, yeah. oh, I should have got something more out of that. And then they're like, get greedy to try and hit you, but hey, you can just jump, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the one I have after that, oh, what is this? Oh, okay, I see what I, see what I did wrong here. Next one is on to 257.45, although it's less of an analysis and more just funny. <laughs> you probably know the, the moment I'm thinking of, but uh, I just, my notes here are, bro is lost, grandpa needs to get to bed. <laughs> it's the way his character model is like moving back and forth, like he's like, he can't keep up. It's, it's something about this. There's like a slight delay on like, he doesn't know which way to face. Yeah. It just makes me laugh. It's like, well, which, where am I? <laughs> yeah. It literally, it looks like he's got amnesia. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> look at all, I, who, who brought grandpa here, bro? Yeah. Nobody bro, told me. bro's lost. <laughs> oh. oh man. Yeah, I, crack me up. No, nah, that, that was good stuff. hundred percent. Um, let me see. I think the note that I'm looking for that I got my timestamp messed up on is towards the end here. Is it after this? Oh, no, no. VX about takes this. Okay, I, I think it's to end this game. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Because this is game... This is game four, right? Okay, I think it was to end game three that I was looking at. Okay. 
Uh, it, it is just like, I'm like, wow, VX Pal, you, you are a brave man. Let me see. A little bit before this here. Yeah, it was on fist. So let's oh. do VX Bow just so the, the, the cojones on this guy right here. <laughs> plus six. Plus two usually. Nah. Plus six because of burnout. What? Don't care. Was he cooking? Like this I mean... dude VX Bow just <laughs> did not care. Plus six wow. in your face. I'm just going to challenge. And then, yeah, and then he converts to level two, which means, or excuse me, CA, which means Banana Ken's burnt out. He got his drive gauge back and he just runs away with it from there so oh, i was but like i can try to do that maybe just try to delay a button a little yeah. bit and vx bow just immediately pressed yeah that's exactly. like probably the most likely thing he probably delay throw or delay like maybe another roundhouse maybe honestly oh, it's like a throws like, coming out it's either throw or jab yeah something like that oh probably. that's a stand jab yeah it looks like it is just like but yeah he just Yo, he's got the so pipe long. in his eye bro Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <son. laughs> Like legitimately, uh, and he just did not care. Face. I was like, "All right then." Uh, and then after after this happened, after game three where VX Bow wins, this dude Banana Ken went full pit bull. I was like, "Holy smokes, <laughs> you guys get out of this man's way!" Like in game three, I think uh, VX Bow ends up winning the set, right? But uh, there was like this yeah. moment where I was just like, "Wow, you you gotta get out of the way." Yeah, it was this. It was this. Oh yeah. Oh, he wake up the eye. Yeah. That was madness, by the way. <laughs> on on an, on an OD departure as well. Like, yeah. My guy did not care. I was like, he I really. It though. It's like worth the risk. Often, like for sure. Especially in you know this like this specific range, mm -hmm. it works quite often. Because I mean, obviously, stand medium punch is great. Crouch medium punch. These are all like cancelable options. Yeah. But you know, they're usually buffer. You've already spent two bars in the OD like thing. You're probably just trying to buffer in a fireball, take your plus frames. So, yeah, it definitely could work. Yeah, uh, it was really, really interesting. That I have that down as well. Is that VX Bow caught uh Banana Ken tagging a couple of times off scrambles with neutral jumps. This is not the first time it happened in the set, uh, where it was just like a little bit weird, and he's just like, I'm jumping, and he, Banana Ken got caught tagging. A couple of big damage moments happened because of that. Yeah, weirdly, I feel like that was scouted like off uh, defensively. I'm pretty sure la like the last situation that happened in Banana Ken was uh, in he he had the advantage, and then he ended up throwing. So maybe he was like, Oh, I know you want to throw here. Okay. Um, also, this round, I I feel bad like because I was like, Oh, why doesn't I, why does no one use regular amnesia? And <laughs> at the start of this round, Banana Ken tries to wake up regular amnesia and gets cooked. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah, I'm like, Oh yeah, oops, didn't mean it. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. And mostly, I just love <laughs> the way uh, VX Bow kind of controlled this last round. Just uh, very strong. He had the anti air right yeah. there, right? Just Ooh. clean into the level two at this point. Like, what are you going to do about it, right? Just blocks the drive reversal. Super, super clean. And uh, this was a great anti air as well because, like, from this jump range, uh, Crouch Fierce is going to whiff. If you try to Crouch Fierce, like, from there, I'm pretty sure Crouch Fierce is whiffing. So using the right anti-air, and obviously that's the big rewarding anti-air as well. He just looks so so clean and like, like he was out for revenge against Banana Ken, honestly. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, I think uh, Banana Ken won last time. I I, I, these guys if I paid. recall, if they yeah. did, I can't remember. So yeah, a little bit of revenge, definitely uh, big win. I mean, like so we've seen Banana Ken be so clutch in the in the anchor position, and I feel like today was like one of those days where he didn't just randomly win, you know? Yeah. yeah. Definitely got outplayed there. Yeah, definitely good stuff to VX Bow. Good stuff to all the players from SFL. They've been holding it down, right? Nasser Bad. It's actually I'll put the the thing back on screen just so everybody can see the standings now. Nasser, of course, at the tippy top with Bandits close on their tail, and then we have versus Vortex. Actually, has a better round difference than Bandits, but just five less points. So that top three, honestly, not too far away from each other. Glad to see SFL continuing to uh entertain yeah, how, does the the, how does the playoffs work because it's starting i guess tomorrow then or tonight. i don't know yeah we'll uh we'll find out soon because yeah as we mentioned today is wednesday right so yeah, yeah it is going down tomorrow or today tonight tonight right technically yeah i think my early morning tomorrow but yeah yeah okay. depends so where you're from tonight for the people in the u.s and then thursday morning for a lot of the rest of the world so yeah be sure to tune in to sfl week 10 for that before we get out of here, you got anything else you want to tell the folks there, Lazarus? Um, no, 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 a whole lot. I mean, just go ahead and I guess follow me on Twitter at you, Lazarus. 
Uh, I haven't been I'm I haven't been posting too much or doing too much because obviously holiday seasons, but I'm back now. So definitely think one thing I wanted to do is start get back into streaming myself. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you've been having a lot of fun, you know, playing uh, Granby recently. So I've been trying to get back into that. Uh, I probably play some Street Fighter as well. Um, I, I kind of like now I watched it and I kind of need a break from Granblue. I'm like, I mean, let me play some Street Fighter. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's the, the beauty of having multiple fighting games, right? We can kind yeah. of flow in between them and keep all of our, our tastes and perspectives fresh. But yeah, man, always enjoy chopping it up with you. Always enjoy bringing down a SFL. We're going to be back next week with week 10 as well. Yeah, you can follow me, Twitter, YouTube. TikTok. I made a TikTok because those short form videos work oh, well yeah, for the that, format. That works perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So I made It'd that. So yeah, follow me at all those places and whatnot. Thanks, everybody. We'll be back soon. Until next time, be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Peace out.